Sup guys, welcome to Dungeon Drawers Podcast. I'm here with another JRPG game review. Today we're reviewing Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, which came with the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix Collection, which came with Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, and Kingdom Hearts Recoded, right? So I played Final Mix, which originally came out in 2007. I had no idea this ex this game existed back then, right? Which added like cutscenes that connected um, the previous uh, some of the games that came after Kingdom Hearts 2. That was like you know that took place before, like Burp by Sleep. I think I, I could be wrong. Uh, that's what I was told by people. Right, so this yeah, the original Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005, and this collection came out in 2014. So I'm, I played the PS3 version, right, which was developed and published by Square Enix, right. It took me 38 hours and 24 minutes to beat this game. I beat it this morning. I stayed up till like midnight trying to beat the game, only like to be like, no, I have to go. I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Leave it for tomorrow, and I thank God I was able to beat this game, like uh, before work, because <laughs> that's all I would have been thinking about, right? So yeah, let's just go into the story of the game. The story uh, is about Sora, Goofy, and Donald wake up from their slumber, right? Which they've been asleep for a year. Uh, after like since the events of Kingdom Hearts one, which uh, if you didn't, which th this is the one my one criticism with the game, there if you went from Kingdom Hearts one to two, you would have been confused as hell, and that's because certain events there so, certain events between the two games took place in GBA games of all things. <laughs> it's like what the hell. If I had put, like, thankfully, back in the day, this was my first Kingdom Hearts game. So, like, I didn't really care. <laughs> I didn't really, you know, that was lost. But, like, holy crap, if I was a Kingdom Hearts 1 fan and I played this, I would have been, like, pissed off. You you expect me to play the GBA games <laughs> to understand the story. Yeah, so basically what happens is Sora, Donald, Goofy have been gone for a year, right? And... Uh, They've been told by King Mickey, right, that, you know, it, it's not... Yes, they saved the world by defeating Ansem, or was he Ansem, but they have to go out and face the new threat, which is Organization 13, who are beings that don't exactly exist. Because, <laughs> oh, they're, they, they exist between light and darkness, <laughs> right? So our main characters have to go out and reconnect the worlds again and figure out what the heck is Organization 13 up to and find Riku and Kairi, right? <laughs> Which the game starts off like w with a prologue where the first three hours, two or three hours, you play as Roxas who is the nobody of, of Sora, right? I almost said Riku. I, who the heck is Riku's nobody? I don't know. I think it's Axel. They never say. Right? <laughs> and you play as Roxas in the twi in the town of... Uh, in the world of Twilight Town where y you and your friends are are hanging out during summer vacation, right? Which, which was... Which was so nostalgic for me because I initially got this game when I was... 14, 15, I can't remember. And I got, like, uh, and I got this game, you know, like, after, like, before, like, summer vacation, right? Because my mom uh, would always get me a new game around that. So, like, something for something to keep me busy, right? <laughs> During the summer. Right? So, a lot of, a lot of memories with this game, which, back then, I didn't get to be, I didn't beat this game. I had, uh, my friend, my friend, who's, who was much, be way better at me in JRPGs, Beat the game for me, right? Oh my god. Right, so yeah, I, this is the first time I ever beat this game. Right, and oh boy. What, like, the first off, in lots of ways, the game is better than the original, right? 
A lot more Final Fantasy characters, especially Final Fantasy VIII, VIII characters, where in the first one, you only had Selfie and Squall this, this time. They introduced Cypher and his friends, right? His henchmen, right? Who, who hang out in Twilight Town, right? Which is uh, great seeing them again, right? With actual voice acting, because like that Final Fantasy VIII did not have voice acting, right? Oh, my dog! Shut the hell up. <laughs> Trying to do a review. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, like... Uh, yeah, the... Like, literally, with the opening cinematic of this game, where... Which is Yutada Hikaru's Sanctuary in English. Like, not... Like, the beautiful cinematics and the, the music just... Oh my god, brought back so many memories. I, I teared up a bit. <laughs> Beautiful music by Utada Hikara, right? So yeah, uh, I don't want to go... I want to keep this review short because I have an update. But yeah, I'm going to go with my likes and dislikes for the game, right? So, likes. The combat is fantastic, even though I kind of have a love and hate thing with Kingdom Hearts combat now because... <laughs> The Kingdom Hearts, which was originally a spin, like a, a spin-off crossover, whatever you want to call it, of Square Enix and Disney, became so popular. Now the mainline Final Fantasy games are are copying the the combat right of Kingdom Hearts two, uh, King, of Kingdom Hearts games, which is w why people blame Tetsuya Nomura for <laughs> Final Fantasy sixteen. That's how you know. If people were like, why are people blaming Nomura? He didn't even work on 16. That's that's why. It's, that, that just shows you're, you're a filthy casual. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just that. But the combat is great. The music is fantastic. The cinematics. The voice acting. You have f famous like actors return to reprise their roles from the Disney films. Right? Like James Woods. Christopher fucking Lee's in the, in the game as a character, right? Uh, and Angel Lansbury, was, which apparently was in Beauty of the Beast as the m mom or, or maid, I can't remember, as the teacup, uh, which is like, tea, as the teapot, which is like, oh my god, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that was her, <laughs> which if people don't know, she was from Murder, She Wrote, right? You got a variety of gameplay where it be, while you go to diff, different worlds, before you can go to the world, you have to you have a bullet hell segment where you play as the gummy ship, right? There's also mini games in the in the the game as well, like when you go to Winnie the Pooh's storybook, right, in Hollow Bastion, and or, or when you go to the Tron world, which is also in Hollow. Hollow Bastion, where you have the light bike, the light bikes, right? Which was cool. Um, yeah, you also have w really cool weapons in the game, right? Not you can equip new weapons for Sora, which has like which one problem I have with the game is all the really cool keyblades you get at the end of the game when you would go like hours. Hours. Sometimes you have to go to the same world twice to get a new key played. You just get like four, like four new key baits at at the end game that are all cooler than the last man with higher stats. Like when when I fi I finally get fucking Squall's key blade, uh, gun blade key blade, and what happens? I get a new key blade that has better stats. It's like <laughs> it's the next the next hour. It's like god damn it. But yeah. Lots of exploration in the game. That there's a crafting system, right? Uh, the you you can change forms in this g game. That like you have the valor form that specializes in strength. You have the wisdom form, which is like a running gun, <laughs> running gun form, which specializes in magic. You have the limit form, which allows you to do limit breaks, and you have the master form, which is a combination of strength and magic though what sucks about this game is that at the end game during the bosses you're only allowed to use the limit form which kind of sucks right because i didn't find i never leveled up the limit form i mostly use either the wisdom or the valor right 
So yeah, which you can level them up, right? Um, yeah, and also you can leveling up in the game is super easy. Like yeah, this is a yeah. So now we're gonna go my dislikes. So the boss fights are half cinematic, right? Which I don't have a problem with that. But there's the thing where if you press triangle at the right time, you can. It allows you to do special moves, which are some act, which look great. But it's also by pressing triangle a lot, you can it, you can just press triangle to win like a lot of fights, including boss fights that that were normally hard. If you press triangle at the right time, now they're suddenly easy, man. Which yeah. Um, this game is shorter than the first one. The first one took me, I, if I remember correctly, it's been a couple of years since I played the first one. It took me over 70 hours to beat the first one. I beat this one in less than 40. And I wasn't even trying to get to, trying to beat the game. I, I was trying to save the final area for last. And, uh, I noticed that there were like two, like, um, two, uh, key keyholes that like they'll show a world on the map world map they'll show a world that have like empty keyholes right that means that oh there's stuff to do on the world so there's two empty ones on hollow bastion so i'm like i'll go to hollow bastion do some stuff only for uh w while you're on hollow bastion you get teleported to the final the end game like world it's like what the fuck man <laughs> it's like Oh my god. I was trying to avoid the end game only to be sucked into the end game, right? Which by the way, there's also optional bosses because a lot of the organization 13 members Sora def Sora and Riku defeated in the previous in the GBA game. So you can f you can fight them as op optional bosses in this game in the game, right? I don't know if you get a reward for beating them all. I'm I assume you do. Or otherwise, what would be the point? Because they're they're not easy. Uh, that's for score. That's for sure. Uh, they're unskippable credits at the end, which kind of sucks. Which there is a cutscene at the end, so it's like, yeah, it would have been nice if I could skip the credits so I can watch the cutscene so I could go to work on time, <laughs> right? Oh, but whatever, right? Um, and I don't know. This is a nitpick, and I don't even know if this is true, but. I used to call, I used to buy the gaming magazines, right? Back in the day, like Electric Games Monthly or whatever. And they had an article in there from what I remember. And like a lot of people talked about this that Cloud and Sephiroth were in the game and they were they were there's a point in the game where they have this epic fucking fight. Right? And I don't I played the game and did I fucking miss it? Which I missed the first time around and I missed it again when I replayed this game years later. So it's like, does this, does the epic Cloud vs. Sephiroth fight exist or was that all bullshit? <laughs> I mean, I think there was a scene during the Siege of Hollow Bastion where like, uh, Cloud sees like, you know, Sephiroth and Cloud tries to attack him and he runs away, right, or whatever, he fucks off. Was that what they were fucking talking about? If not, if so, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> oh my god. If so, but yeah. Um, the final part, and this is just a nitpick, but this is also true. The story is cringe for grown adults. If you do not have nostalgic for this game, and you're a grown adult, and you want to go, you want to check these games out. They are cringe. They are very cringe. So you have to be either a hardcore Final Fantasy fan, or a hardcore Disney fan, or someone who grew up with the games to enjoy the story. Because the story is anime weep bullshit. <laughs> right? But aside from that, great fucking game. It, aside from like s certain nitpicks, which by the way, there were scenes in the game where during the cutscenes where for brief seconds, they were not in HD on my on my PS3 copy, so I don't know what the fuck if that's a problem with the other ports of this game, right? But yeah, that was a small problem. But otherwise, I fucking love this game. Like it is fantastic, and well, I want to go and play more Kingdom Hearts games, only for me uh, not to because I wrote a fucking 
huge list of 50 games I'm going to play, and I'm not going to add any more games. So until I beat all these games on this list, I'm not going to uh, play or, or beat any more games. Unless I uh, you know, new games. So yeah. So yeah, 8 out of 10, great game. If you haven't played it, played it, right? Go, go out and get it. And you can get it for cheap, like 20 bucks. Yeah. Though it is kind of a ripoff. Not ripoff, it's like when I bought these, I, I assumed each of the three things that I came with would be three games. These collections come with two games and um, and like a cutscene movie, which is like, what the fuck? <laughs> kind of bullshit, but whatever, right? So yeah. So the next game we're going to play is Kingdom, sorry, King's Bounty 2 for Nintendo Switch, which is a turn-based Western RPG. From now on, uh, I've been having trouble picking games. From now on, I have a list that we're going to go through and we're going to do a, roto a rotation, which is turn-based JRPG, turn-based Western, R sorry, turn sorry, action JRPG, and a Western RPG, which, you know, we rotate between, like, you know, uh, action and turn-based. So, like, you know, that we're going to do a three game rotation so that's how we're gonna pick the games from now on that from the list right so some of the games we're gonna we're gonna pl review on the channel soon I'm I got like I'll show you I'll I'll list up the 10 Western RPGs which is gonna be which there are other games on this list but I, the top 10 Western RPGs I want to play to review on the channel is what Baldur's Gate Pillars of Attorney Fable Morrowind, Borderlands, Planescape Torment, Divinity Original Sin, Fallout 3, Banner Saga, Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Here are the, the top 10 JRPGs I want to play the beat. Final Fantasy 7, Xenoblade Chronicles, Legend of Dragoon, The Last Story, Star Ocean to the End of Time, Grandia 3, Valkyrie Profile, Sukhulin 5, Dragon's Dogma, and Fire Emblem, Path of Rad Radiance. And uh, also, I'm going to go back and play like, uh, you know, the newer games I never that I bought that I never got around to playing, right? Like SMT5, Soul Hackers 2, Fairy Tail, uh, Model Anomalies, Crisis Core Remake, Ephemeral Fantasia, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Stranger Paradise, and we'll we'll mix it up with crappy RPGs, you know, which is One Piece. A Limited Adventure, Tales of Legendia, White Knight Chronicles, Skies Arcade. It's not crappy, I just don't like the game that much. Valhalla Knights, Elder Saga, Warriors of Might and Magic, Breath of Fire, Qu uh, Dragon Quarter. I, I just put Dragon Breath of Fire 5, but when, when it's not really Breath of Fire 5, but it's the PS2 one. Rune Factory, F F Frontier, Valkyria P Revolution, Tr Trinity Souls of Zeo, Dragon Age 3, Sacred 2, Hunted, Bard's Tale, Dark Kingdom and Legend of the Gaia, which I just added. That's not crappy RPG. I just put that there. So yeah, those are like 50 games we're gonna review. Hopefully, you know, sooner than later. But yeah, so like, if this review gets 50 views, which I doubt it will, which please like and comment. Uh, we'll do a poll, and you guys will vote for the next JRPG review. Not which the next game review is going to be a Western RPG, right? Just so that you know. Um, so yeah, the, the, the choices are going to be, if we, this video gets 50 views, is Legend of Dragoon, PS1, Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance, and Legend of Legalia. Alright guys, peace.